So you're designing a female character or characters who need some armor, and not the ceremonial stuff either, stuff they can actually fight in. That being the case, you probably know to avoid all of the obvious armor pitfalls. Armor that protects non-vital areas but leaves your gut or chest exposed. Not to mention leaving you exposed to the weather if you're on location. Metal on bare skin in general. Battle stilettos. Combat wedges. But you're wondering what to do about the boob situation. Alright, let's do this. Four considerations to take into account when designing torso armor for ladies, and at the end of the video, a lightning round where I give you my actual opinion. I mean, more so than the rest of this video. I'm Jill Bear Up, I make videos about fights in media. Off we go. One. You don't need boob plate. A. There is no inherent mechanical advantage to armour shaped like two separate breasts. The disadvantages range from very minor to more of an issue, but we'll get into those and how to mitigate them a bit later on. B. If we're talking about medieval plate or medieval plate inspired stuff, then basically any size of breasts can be accommodated within a smoothly curved cuirass. Both because gambesons tend to smooth out the curve a bit, and also because medieval armour requires a fair bit of extra space in the chest cavity regardless because people need to breathe. So something like this, or maybe this, could be very easily altered to accommodate the female form, and it really wouldn't look that different on the outside at all. I mean, stormtroopers also look basically indistinguishable regardless of breast or chest size, which is important if you're a stormtrooper, though I'm really not sure whether only the male stormtroopers get the codpiece. Apparently, Elizabeth I historically wore a breastplate, though not full armour, but this is a really nice example. If the same armour design as the men option appeals, but you want to signal that the character is a woman, without kitting her out with metal boobs, then there are some nice skirt or tunic options. Long skirts may hamper mobility a bit, but look at this guy. Is he not stylish? C. Close-fitting body armour doesn't need cleavage. If you look at police or military flak jackets, you'll note that they're not exactly showing off the goods, but underneath all of those pockets they are pretty precisely tailored to fit the wearer. And for women they do this by taking bust, underbust, waist, and length measurements, as well as possibly shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder measurements in some cases. Protective gear for motorbikes is more about tough fabric with extra plates for impact protection, but even then it's hardly cleavage-tastic. I suppose that would be an active disadvantage for impact protection, you want something that will spread the force over the widest possible area. And D, there are so many options which aren't plate armour. We're not really going to be talking about them in depth today, but so many. Depending on who, where, and when your female character is, as well as what she's doing, why, and what materials are available, you have so many things that you can either use wholesale or use as inspiration. Like male. I mean, historically this was worn over a gambeson, but never mind. Or scale? Or lamellar, like this one, which has slits up the back for ease of movement and presumably also horse riding. Or brigandine. And the nice thing about these is that even though they're not very cleavagey. A lot of them do belt in at the natural waist so that you can distribute some of that weight onto your hips and not have it just hanging off your shoulders. So you can still get that kind of female shape without going nuts. Okay, but maybe you're really heck-bent on breastplate and plate armour and you really like armour that looks obviously female. Second point to consider, divots are a disadvantage. A. Convex shaping is the optimal way to make plate. Convex shapes are more likely to have weapons glance off, which is why a lot of medieval examples of plate armour have that ridge in the middle as the highest point. But also, mechanically speaking, domes and convex shapes are more difficult to crush, and so they will be maximally protective when you take a hit. Because of this, any indent will be a weak point mechanically. And B, if you add in extra thickness, between the breasts to compensate for the weak point, you are raising your centre of mass a little bit. Which again is slightly disadvantageous, and this goes double if your breastplate design is a regular, slightly curved plate with some boobs stapled over the top. Some things which people are already rushing to the comment section with at this point. But Jill, how can you say that? People did disadvantageous things with armour all of the time. First, look at muscle cuirasses. Second, look how medieval armour often had a wasp waist. And third, cod pieces. Need I say more? So let's talk about all of those, because it's not even a tangent, they're useful for illustrative purposes. First I invite you to look at the depth of the indents on the muscle cuirasses. Even in the more extreme example, it's not that deep. Is this shape less efficient inherently than a convex plate? Yeah, by a lot? Nah. So sure, muscle cuirasses with a bunch of abs and pecs aren't the absolute most efficient thing, but they did look great, and they were pretty likely to protect you against anything you were likely to come across. So same principle with your lady armour. Is it marginally less efficient to have a boob shelf with a slightly steeper curve underneath to emphasise the bust? Yes. Might some characters choose that option anyway? 
I would say, yeah, probably, because it's not going to make that much of a difference. A very pragmatic character, or one who does not wish her sex to be known on the battlefield, or one who would really like you to stop looking at her boobs, please, or one who is actually just using repurposed men's armour, hi Eowyn, probably wouldn't have it, but a character who likes to look good may well go for this option, albeit not as suctioned on as it looks in uh, computer games. It's a little more tricky with cleavage divots. Now, again, if it's fairly small, I would say you can probably crack on if aesthetics are a priority. But I would refrain from having a really big indent. Or at least making like Wonder Woman and adding some extra thickness over the top so the indent is less steep and deep. Something like this will raise the centre of mass a bit, but not by very much. And if it's more illusory thickness, like there's actually more of a shelf behind there than two separate breast holes, then that will also make it easier to wear. Two plate plate has its own disadvantages, but hold that thought for point three. As for why does medieval armour go in and have a wasp waist with a join there then, Jill? Glad you asked. I mean, aesthetics is one reason aesthetics are important, but there are two other really quite important reasons. First, because armour is heavy, and one of the ways they distribute the weight evenly so you can move around freely in it is by taking some of the weight off the shoulders and putting it on the hips. And to do this, you need armour that comes into the natural waist so that it can shape itself over your hips. The chest, as I mentioned earlier, has to be larger than the natural chest, otherwise the knight will not be able to breathe but the armour should come in relatively close to your natural waist. Even armours which had that super efficient hot belly for weapon deflection still come in and sit on the natural waist so they can shape over the hips. Weight distribution matters, and waist shaping is really good for this. As for the second reason, well, you have to be able to bend in armour, and that means that there needs to be some kind of joining or segmentation at the waist. If it's just one flat plate that goes all the way down to your hips, you're not really going to be able to bend very effectively, which might get you in trouble. And so the indent at the waist is necessary. If you're facing enemies with weapons they want to stick to you, they want something that's going to catch in one of the joins so they have sufficient force to knock you off your horse, then a big cleavage divot is just really asking for a polearm to the bust, which is an unpleasant experience for anyone. Breasts don't need to move for your character to fight. Rather the opposite, in fact. So this concave piece between the breasts is aesthetic, but entirely unnecessary and in some situations a really active disadvantage. It serves no practical purpose, unlike the waist join, and its deepness and steepness will make it more of a disadvantage than the muscle cuirass. Now a metal plate is pretty darn strong, and if your armourer is in any way sensible, they're not going to make it so it rests directly on your sternum. So that's probably not going to be an issue. But again, it will be inherently less good at distributing the force of strikes because of its geometry. So if someone comes at you hard with a pole arm, then you are going to feel it more than you would if you were in a more gently curved design. And in general, unless she's a member of a fantasy race of some kind, women have lower bone density than men, and so it's more likely that you're going to break a bone anyway when someone comes at you with a weapon like that. Frankly, I don't think that force distribution is the main disadvantage of the cleavage divot. I think that it's, one, it makes you stickier, so it's easier to knock you off your horse, and that's most of the win condition if you're a medieval peasant, because now they're on the ground and maybe unarmed and this is a very bad day for them, but also because of point three, which we'll get to in a second. Basically, boob plate is the equivalent of the metal cord piece. It's there for fashion. Your actual boobs or penis should not be in there. It's not a bra, it should not actually be resting on your skin. And there are some disadvantages you need to consider if you want to make it comically huge. Even if the armour is sci-fi and sci-fi materials and so very light so weight isn't an issue. Also note what was acceptable in tournament armour was either toned down on the battlefield or reserved on the battlefield for dudes who were not expected to do a lot of actual fighting. You know important people. If that's true for your lady, crack on. If not, maybe consider making it more of a gentle indent than a giant valley. Three, consider mobility. Remember that I said, probably a couple of times at this point, that armour requires space in the chest cavity for breathing. Well, please imagine you have that, and then on top of it you've hammered out extra unnecessary space to make boobs. At what point does this become a problem for mobility when wielding weapons, particularly two-handed weapons? Something to consider. This is a particular problem for two-plate boob plate. Even if you have beautiful, strong, light sci-fi armour for your characters and you don't need to weigh the consequences, if you want some extra inboobening for aesthetic reasons, do consider range of motion and mobility when wielding weapons. All armour restricts mobility to a certain extent. You know what rather restricts range of motion at the front? 
solid breasts. If your character is a large-chested lady to begin with, then she's just going to have to cope with some degree of restriction, but you don't want to add to a generously endowed woman's troubles by adding extra boobs over the top of her existing boobs. Especially because past a certain point you just can't use some two-handed weapons effectively. Especially if you've decided to go the flippin' lance connect route and give her a giant sword. Because the way that you wield one of these is you make a really solid triangle with your arms and you move from there. The moving from there part might be slightly tricky if if you've got too much going on up top. Bear in mind also that breasts in a push-up bra are not equivalent to breasts in a sports bra and maybe chill a little bit with the giant boobed anime girl look. If use of weapons is important to this character you have kitted out in armour, then don't give her a comedy breastplate that will require you to do an Elsa from Frozen and pass her arms through her boobs every time she wants to move her sword. Breasts are squishy. They move. Armour generally not. So as far as possible, you don't want armour that extends out past the sides of your actual torso so. And when considering how big to make the chest, consider how easy it will be to move your arms. So a couple of extra things to bear in mind. The first is that I'm being kind of ungenerous with the underlayers in order to make it as fair as possible. Possibly too fair. I have one layer on underneath a turtleneck which is not terribly thick. Gambesins are generally thicker than that, so you've got more restriction to begin with before you start adding layers. Second point to consider, my armour is made of cardboard. I was going to add extra bits over the hips, but I just could not be bothered. And so because of that, it's already got a lot more flex than metal armour. It is also marginally thinner than metal armour. Something that you can see when I put on the one that's just completely ridiculous anime girl plate is that it's very hard to do a low guard and particularly, regardless of what you do, you can't generate the power that you would normally in a low guard. Given that the vast majority of women are less strong than the vast majority of men, this is not a great thing to do because you're already at a disadvantage when it comes to power generation. If you have a, a bigger plate, you either have to put your arms underneath and if the plate is too big then you just can't follow through like that or you have to put them over the top, which means you aren't generating as much power with the top arm. In general, uh, I need all the help I can get, so I would not be going for that. One last thing. I mentioned before about not wanting your sex to be known on the battlefield, and I think that's a pretty sensible consideration. Because women are generally weaker than men, you don't necessarily want to draw attention to yourself as a woman because you pick yourself out as a weaker target, or a potentially weaker target at least. To say nothing of painting a target on your back for other kinds of violence, which we will not mention specifically because I'm still holding out the hope that this video won't get demonetized, even though I've said the word boobs about a hundred times. There you go. Four. Breathing is important. This point is about closeness of fit, specifically. When it comes to the relative size of the character in the armour, don't take video games as your jumping off point. Game characters do not need to expand their chests to breathe, they just need to look like they're breathing. If the breastplate is a solid piece, real people will need some space to breathe in there because respiration is kind of necessary for life. Your actors and stunt performers will thank you, and so will cosplayers. I mention games because they don't really need realism in armour fit if they don't want to have it. If the metal seems to be suction moulded onto your character's body, including her breasts, then well, I think it looks a bit silly, but it's not actually impeding her because she's not real. But you probably shouldn't do this with real people and real metal. Or like this lady is wearing chainmail, but either she has a waist the same circumference as her head or she's not wearing any kind of protective underlayer at all. Good luck with those arrows, lady. It is possible to combine realism and aesthetics when designing armour, but bear in mind that if what you want is cheesecake, then you probably should just go for lingerie. Armour is meant to be protective. If armour is not protective, then it's not doing its job and so it's just kind of dumb looking. This Skyrim armour looks, you know, good if you're into that sort of thing, but in real life that would be someone who has hammered out extra space over the top of their existing bust to give the impression of a bust. And especially if you're working with real people, as I said, there will come a point where that hampers range of motion. Those of you who saw my fighting in a corset video will know that I punch like someone who doesn't really know how to punch, but also that fighting in a corset is not particularly restrictive, as long as you don't do something stupid like lace it up really tightly. Fabric, even fabric with steel or plastic bones in it, still has a fair amount of give and flex. This is not true of solid pieces of metal, or just solid armour in general. If you look at the Mandalorians ladies in armour, you'll note that they have plates that are close-fitting, but they aren't solid. 
There is sci-fi fabric covering the unplated areas. It will move with them. See also, again, protective gear for motorcycling. There are plates there for impact protection, but mostly it's toughened fabric that's doing the work. If you design a solid form-fitting breastplate, which is meant to be worn by a real human woman, then do leave enough space for breathing. Enough space for breathing pretty heavily, actually, because fighting is quite strenuous. If you go for something like modern military armour, but made from a thin sci-fi-ish fabric, or material, and you put the storage elsewhere, you'd end up with something that would conform to the body reasonably closely. It will be less close-fitting if it's meant to be a solid piece. But if you go for the separate plates over sci-fi fabric look, then you can reasonably end up with something like you would see on The Mandalorian, either on Cara Dune or on The Mandalorians themselves, and it would look pretty good. That being said, if you go for that option, you definitely don't want a big cleavage divot, because that might actually sit on your sternum, and then if someone hits you there, ow. Ow. Some kind of minor decorative indent for aesthetics is totally possible, but don't go nuts. Basically, female characters in armour are great, and I love them, but to borrow a phrase from past Jill, it rather pings one's suspension of disbelief by the bra strap when they're wearing armour that seems to be a sexy afterthought rather than actually meant to be protective, or when their boob armour is so huge that they're going to have trouble assuming a guard stance. And if a stunt performer is going to have to fight in this stuff, and your actor is going to have to spend 12 hours a day in it, then comfort and breathing room should be big considerations. As well as aesthetics, obviously. Let's do this. Love the look and the colours, but there's no waist segmentation with those metal parts, so you can't bend. And I don't know what this is made of. These bits look metal, but if you were a man I'd be calling that self-castration plate. Maybe all the metal and the purple stuff is actually bendy like cloth, except in the case of the sword. Concept looks really nice. Execution would need significant tweaking for a real person. The metal is over bits that don't bend and goes all the way to her throat, which I appreciate, and I like that there's a suggestion of female secondary sexual characteristics without having to make a giant booby plate, so quite like that. This one looks pretty workable, actually. This one might provide more issues. I'm a little bit worried about the positioning of that metal fleur-de-lis, and also what is with the giant cat bell around her waist. Either way, it's a really terrible place to store it. But cloth that is actual cloth is good, because no self-castration. Yay. This isn't even armour. How is this even on the list? But girl, it's meant to be winter. You're going to freeze your bits off. I mean, a little bit too breasted for my personal taste, but doable for a real human, though you might need to lessen that divot a bit to make room for your actual chest. See, this this kind of thing just annoys me. If she's meant to be sexy, just put her in lingerie. If she's meant to be sexy and dangerous, then give her armour that actually protects, but also looks really nice. Cover her vitals. Also, metal on bare skin is distinctly unfun. See, this doesn't particularly bother me because it's clearly not armour at all. The thing that's getting me, aside from the fact that he gets to cover like 90% of his torso where she only gets to cover 30%, is this weird fur bare skin combination thing. If you live in a hot climate, don't wear very many clothes, but make them of lighter fabrics. If you live in a cold climate, wear fur, but cover as much of your body with it as possible. Or are those feathers? I genuinely can't tell. Moving on. <laughs> Amazing. Armour that's broken up at the waist, protection all the way to the neck, breathing is obviously possible, no boob plate and that's totally fine. Liking it. I have mentioned this in a previous video, but I absolutely hate the giant combat wedges. And that swimsuit piece between the legs is just asking for thrush, or chafing, or both. But the segmentation means that she can probably bend at the waist, and honestly overall I quite like the look. Just get rid of the swimsuit crotch piece and the heels and we're good to go. I love those metal rings as bracers and gorget. No helmet, but you know, movies. And can we just take a moment to appreciate those nice, flat, sturdy boots? <sighs> also, as a costume design point, I like that she has slightly different patterning and gold accoutrements as opposed to the rest of the Dora Milaje, who have silver. In real life, I think that boob shelf would have to be a little bit less pronounced for mobility's sake, but I really like that they have the badge in the middle instead of having a big indent. Like, there's a suggestion of an indent, but it's not really going to be a big issue. Give me some more waist segmentation and a helmet and I am there. I mean, look at it. It's so pretty. And shiny. I like shiny. And if you made it to the end of this video, congratulations! I offer you this footage of my cats being extremely unimpressed that I am filming them as a reward. Which means that you can go into the comment section and comment KITTIES! And everyone who hasn't watched the video all the way to the end will be very confused. Anyway, I feel better having got all that off my chest, <laughs> so I'll see you next time.